Shiva Sutras. Sukha Dukha Yor Bahir Mananam. Bahir Mananam. So um, I'll read the direct translation and then we'll go a little uh, further. The yogi experiences joy and sadness just like an object as a fluctuation of consciousness and independent of the yogi's being, independent of the yogi's being. Rather, the yogi's being is independent. But let's go a little uh, further because this is actually a great sutra to understand how we create our personal reality. So uh, uh, I think we can say a little, expand a little further on what has been said in the commentary. To the yogi, the uh, experience of opposites is actually the experience of complementarities. All experience, all experience is through contrast. Sadness, happiness, sharp, smooth, hard, soft, birth, death, sound, silence, on, off, light, dark. So all experience is through contrast. Every experience has its opposite experience. And actually, Every experience is a mental and perceptual event. There's no difference between mental events and what we call objects. No difference between mental events and what we call objects. Why? Because both mental events and so-called objects, including the object that we call our body, so-called objects are actually perceptual activities that have filtered through the divided, uh, fragmented self. And so there's no difference between a mental event and an object seen outside the body or as the body. An object seen outside the body or as the body there is no difference between those objects, this object, and mental events. Because all objects are also perceptual events. So there's no difference between mental and perceptual events other than a different frequency of vibration. So all so-called objects, this hand, this body, these glasses, all so-called objects are actually space-time events in the same way as thoughts are space-time events, as imagination or images are space-time events, or as feelings are space-time events. And all space-time events, whether they be called them objects or the body or whatever, are an alchemy of sensations that are modified forms of the self as that. So the mind is sensations, subtle sensations. Emotions are subtle sensations. Images are subtle sensations. Okay, we can try an experiment right now. So close your eyes and uh, imagine a rainbow. Now imagine snow-clad mountains. Now imagine um, a, a, a piece of rock. Imagine looking at the face of your friends or your mother. See, every image that is created is destroyed before the next image is created. So the form and formless are also complementarities. So if all experience is complementarity and what we call life is a continuum of experiences and that continuum of experiences includes the fluctuations 
that we call mind, intellect, ego. It includes the fluctuations that we call the energetic and physical body. It includes the fluctuations that we call the world. They're all different frequencies of the self. They're all objects of experience. And there's only one subject of experience, experiencing itself as innumerable objects of experience through instruments of experience, which are also the body-mind, but they're also fluctuations of the self. The self knows itself in infinite ways. But leave that aside now. Let's go back to Lakshman Ju and the Shiva Sutra. He says, the yogi having realized that everything is the yogi's creation, the mind is the yogi's creation, the body is the yogi's creation, and the physical world is the yogi's creation, and all these creations are alchemy of sensations. Sensations, sense perceptions, images, feelings, thoughts. By shifting the vibrancy, the vibratory frequency of sensations and the alchemy of sensations, the yogi knows how to create everyday reality uh, as the alchemy of sensations and the, uh, the deeper understanding that the sensations are fluctuations of the self, all one needs is to be established in the self and then consciously choose the alchemy of sensations to create the reality you want, including the reality of your personality, the reality of your mind, the reality or experience reality of your mind, the reality of your imagination, the reality of your body and the perceived reality of the world. Because what we call the world is also the alchemy of sensations. For most people, they're born into this interpreted alchemy of sensations. Only the awakened yogi knows that it's a constructed alchemy of sensations through the recycling of culture tradition, religion, history, and evolution. But once you wake up, you're not subject to those rules. So become a conscious observer and then become a conscious participant in the alchemy of sensations and you can create your own reality but integrate it with everyday reality. Otherwise, there's a thin line between sages, psychotics, and geniuses. Okay, my friends, I hope you enjoyed that sutra.